Howdy, I'm Chuck with Simply Nuck, and this is the Dragon Canyon, which we've shown you before, but the powers to be have asked me to give you an inside look. So today we're gonna do an inside look. Come join me as we take a deep dive into the Dragon Canyon. This is the part of the program where I remind you about static precautions. I do have my wrist strap, we have our anti-static surface, and I am wearing my smock. ESD is the destroyer of electronics, so please use precautions. I've loosened the four screws in the back and the plastic plate unclips from the top and unhooks from the bottom. Once that's out of your way, the front or the left side panel just pulls back and off. The right side panel pulls back and off. And the top panel unclips. And we are into it that easy. But now we're going to take the element itself out. All right, take the element out. There is a screw on the back, which holds down the back plate. So we'll loosen that screw. This just swings out of the way, exposing the screws for each of the slots. So we'll go ahead and take the vent, the um, air duct for the card out first. And then we'll take the one for the element card itself out. Now, once you remove the right side panel, you can get to the latch. So on the back side, as you know, graphics cards have these little latches that hold them in, and so does the element card, and you can uh, access it through this whole thing. So I'm going to be pressing down on the latch to unlock it, but there's a lot of cords to remove as well. So we're gonna remove the USB 2.0, the USB 3.0, the power connector, uh, probably good enough for now. We'll access the other ones here in a second. And then I'm just going to press down on the ejection latch and lift up on the card. And it knows that we are filming, and that's why it's being a little persnickety, but that's why, why you watch us do this instead of doing it yourself. You can fully access the RAM and SSD without taking the card out. So there's really no reason to, to uh, take the card out other than to show people that you did it. All right, now once we get it out, I'm accessing the antennas on the, uh, the coax cables for the antennas on the top. These have to be pulled straight up. Very important that they not be angled sideways because they will tear the connectors off the board and then the board is damaged. So looking back at the chassis, the Dragon Canyon chassis, you can see the full length 16 lane slot that the element card plugs into, as well as the slot for your add-in card. Now typically this add-in card is a double wide full length graphics card, and the power supply does support all the way up to the 3080 card. But the slot does support one, two, four, eight, and 16 lane plug-in cards. The baseboard itself doesn't really have any additional features. It does have the IO for the front panel. So we're gonna see if I can get you a view of that. So you can see the electronics up in here uh, for the front panel. And looking at the front panel, that's how those connectors are soldered onto that baseboard. Looking at the bottom, we have the switch for turning on and off the base and front lighting, as well as a SSD access door. This particular baseboard does not have a socket, but some baseboards will have a SSD socket here that allows you to put another socket in. This is a prototype unit. I do expect it to be there on the production units. So in that case, you would simply remove the screw, this panel comes out. It's also the thermal heat plate. And then you would put your SSD in here and close it up. The advantage of this, if supported, means you don't have to take the unit apart to add a SSD or other device. 
All right, and then you can see the three blower fans that are used for cooling. All right, and then I'm going to hold this still for just a minute so you can take a look. All right, through the miracle of editing, we have now got the element out. I did have to use some uh, pliers to get the antennas off properly. There are two screws in the top that I've loosened, and then they the plate levers forward and out. And then over on this side, you can see that the fan cable just plugs in. I'm gonna reach at the base and unplug it. And now I can take this off. You can see this actually has the SSD coolers for the two that go in the top side. This is an engineering prototype, by the way, used for engineering testing. There is one SSD on the back, We'll go ahead and take that plate off here as well. But the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is extract the dims, or dim, so it's not in the way. The SSD should not be in the way for now, so I'll leave them there. So now we'll flip it over, and the next part, oops. Next part of it is to remove these four corner screws. These are holding the back plate on. And there is a little nifty place to go down in here. Loosen that one up. And now you can see the bottom just comes right off. If you take the correct uh, screws off, there's the bottom plate. Now we start to see the radio, we can see the uh, IGP, and then the backer plate for the processor socket and the SSD. Again, we don't need to take that off yet. So now the next part we can take off are these four screws, which gets off the plastic frame. And since we've removed the blower assembly, uh, the frame will just come off. And then we'll also take off the two screws for the metal bracket. I don't believe they are required to be taken off at the moment though. So we'll start with this. Now, will that just come off? Of course not. Oh, uh, there is one screw here on the top. We'll take this screw off. Now the frame wants to come off. Cool. So, but we do have the battery is in the way. So I'm just gonna reach in here and grab it and unplug the battery. So there's the battery and the cord for it just plugs into the board. So now we have it out of the way. It's starting to look a little bit more raw now. Now we're gonna take off the two screws that hold on the metal plate. Now, one of the cool things about the Dragon Canyon is that the processor is socketed. And so as we get to the processor socket, we're going to see that it is a, uh, it is capable, you're capable of being able to upgrade or simply look upgrading the processor for you. We'll go ahead and remove the DIMMs now, so, or the SSD, so that we can get a better look. And I will lay these out to remember the order they were in there. So engineering, who may not know that we have taken their unit apart. <laughs> no, they uh, loaned us this for this video. But so that it works for them when we're done. Or to the best of my ability that it works. We'll go ahead and just leave the radio there. There's nothing under the radio to see. But we will take this SSD off. Oh or just the cover plate. And this is just to uh, provide a thermal cooling plate for that SSD socket on the back. All right, we're getting close now. We have the four spring screws, and these are numbered. One, two, three, four. You can put them on or take them off in the same order, so I'm just gonna loosen one all the way up. 
The reason that these are numbered that you kind of go in an X pattern is to give even pressure to the uh, heat sink onto the processor. So it's, it's important that the um, die pressure be even, evenly distributed, and so that's why there's this kind of X pattern for putting it on. So we'll take loosen these four screws up. I think we're loose. Definitely is loose. All right. So now there's thermal paste on here that wants to hold on to it. So I'm going to kind of wiggle it and then hold pressure on one corner. See if I can get it to break loose. I don't want to just pull it out because it uh, is pulling on the processor. There's some. Uh, um, the thermal uh, pad or paste is applying pressure or suction, I guess you could say, but it does not want to come off. Um, it is ready to come off. I do not see anything else holding it in place. So there it goes. It just that pressure and lots of thermal paste. So here is the cooling solution. Nice uh, copper fin array with a vapor chamber. So the vapor chamber works. You can see that this is actually a cavity. So this is a vapor chamber, like a heat pipe, except this entire plate is a heat pipe. So any hot spot is immediately transferred to the entire surface area, which includes a fin array area, which wicks at uh, heat up the fins and the blower blows it out. All right, and we have a lot of paste on this thing. Wow. I think I'm going to have to get a, I'm going to have to clean all this paste off so that we can repaste it. But we are going to open the, oh, and then the backer plate also came off. So this is the backer plate for the processor. Go ahead and get him out of the way and then show you the back side again. So now you can see the metal backer plate for the processor socket itself. All right, so here is the latch assembly for, oops, see if I can get you a better view of the latch assembly. So the latch assembly is a push down and unhook. Oops, oh, and that's why you let Simply Nook take this risk because now I've got to clean the paste off of these uh, pins. All right, so this unhooks, the plate comes off, and uh, I have a lot of cleanup to do before we can put this back together again. So there is the board. Now under here is the power supply uh, fats and inductors. So this is just a little metal heat sink to wick off some of that heat from those parts, allow them to cool better. Go ahead and get that off though so you can get a better look at it. Oh, and it has uh, thermal pads on it. So now, you can see <clears throat> these are power uh, inductors. These are the power FETs right here. So for each of the for the each of the phases, this has a two phase high amperage and a single phase. And there's actually more phases here. So the heat sink assembly rests on these. So we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine large amperage. Uh, uh, switching circuits and then two smaller ones. So this is probably for a secondary voltage and this is the probably for the primary voltage. As you can see, uh, other than the fact I've got to clean the pins off before I put the new processor in, if I had a new processor, I could then at this point paste it up and put it inside the unit. Let's see if there's anything else to look. I think that we've kind of taken a good look at all the uh, items. This one is a prototype, so it has a socketed BIOS. Uh, that chip will be soldered down. And um, just get, uh, let's see if I can get a nice steady 
look at it so you can freeze frame and zoom up on it. And then we'll take a look at the back. All right. So this has been Chuck with Simply Nuck doing a deep dive on the new Dragon Canyon and showing off the CPU socket, which can allow for uh, just upgrading the processor in the future. Head over to simplynook.com at the links below to secure your new Dragon Canyon. Thank you.